five, six. Emma, I can't have that. Who can tell me? Who can tell me? What What was your aim with those numbers? What were you trying to do with those digits? What were you trying to do? To get the highest number. Well, you were trying to get the highest number, but how would you get that, Flinton? Have you got your hand up? Um, by putting the highest number in the highest place value. Fabulous. That is exactly what I wanted to hear, Flinton. So I tried to put the biggest number in the highest place value. Now, there was a little bit. At one point, we got a number four, and I was like, oh, should I put it in my hand? Should I put it in my hand? In my hundred? Should I? And it does, does make you think. Okay, because it's a bit of luck, isn't it? You don't know what number's going to come next. So, what we're going to do is we're going to stop that there, and then we'll do our lesson, and then we'll see. We might do another one at the end. Okay, so let's move on to... Because our number, our number becomes 
it's not that we add it and it's not the same because when we add something, we are actually adding. Okay, we're not adding a zero because if we add, add we zero, squish it together. We, we do, we squish it together and we move the whole number up our place value. Is that the number becomes 60. Now we can use our column addition to add all that together. So 2 add 0, let's start in our ones, is 2. 1 add 6 is what, sir? 2 add 6. 1 add 6. Or 10 add 60. And 70. So the answer is, oh, <laughs> is 72. So 24 times 3 is 72. That's the answer I had to start. Oh, it does look like 7.2. <laughs> That's not, it's not meant to be a coin. Oh, my. <laughs> 72. Okay, and that is what we call the expanded method of multiplication or the ladder method. Okay, it's called a ladder method because it, go, it goes up in, in rows or columns. And eventually, we're going to move on this ladder method to be in a short method where we don't have everything in, everything in its place value. It just gets squished together. Okay, so we're going to try another one. I'm going to go, I'm going to go a bit harder this time. Let's try then. Let's try 28 times 3. 28 times 3. What are we going to do first? Can anyone tell me, put your hand up, what we're going to do first? I already know the answer. <laughs> of course you do, William. <laughs> Uh, let's see. I'm going to start using lolly sticks. You're all a bit asleep this morning. Anyway, <laughs> here, what are we going to do? We're going to start off with. Right. You times eight and three. Good girl. We're going to start. We're going to times or multiply eight times three. We're always starting with our one. So I start with my one. So I put it in brackets just to remind us that we do that. This row is eight times three. What is eight times three then, Rose? Oh, um, eight times three or three times eight? Oh, eight times three. Is that three? Twenty-one. It's not twenty-one. Not twenty-one. Really close. What's five times three? What's five times three? Fifteen. Okay. Add another three. Here. And because we're multiplying by three, that 
That's the important number. That's the number we need to multiply by all the time. Okay? So I know sometimes that can get a little bit confusing. Oh, look, I've deleted a number. <laughs> okay? We then, um, after we've multiplied our ones, we then multiply our tenths using our draw hack time fact if we need to. If we don't need to, that's fabulous. Okay? And then we add up using the column addition method. This is why I was. I was getting you last week to think about partitioning those numbers, and then now we're actually going to be bringing that partition in into our method today. Let's try. Oh, let's try another one. But I want you to have a go at this one. Okay, so let's try. I've got my, I've got my things written down here. Let me have a We'll stick with our threes for now. We'll stick with our threes just for now. I want you to have a go at that in, uh, in your books or on your whiteboards now. I'm going to give you a few minutes to have a go at that. Fabulous. <laughs> You're on fire this morning, William. Me too. And you, Luca. Everyone's on fire this morning, actually. It's 200 and 4. Don't say anything yet. Don't say anything yet, Jacob. You're getting ahead of me. Only because I've got a couple of children that still haven't finished in here. So sit tight. Three hours is 180 minutes. That's well done, Jacob. And then we're going to add 
add that all together. So we've got our ones column, four at zero is four, two at eight is ten. Oh, what do we need to do? What do we make sure we do? Oh, what do we do with, can, can I write ten like this? Can I do that? Can I, Matisse, Five. can I write the number ten in the tens column? I can't. I actually can't because we're only allowed up to nine in each. I call it a party. We're only allowed up to nine in each party. Once there's more than nine, we have to kick them out and they have to go next door. So what we do is we pop the one up here in our hundred column. Now we have an extra hundred. So one hundred, one hundred, two hundred. So our answer should be two hundred and four. Yes. Yeah. Uh, 
calculation 287 times 6 and then we then we times then we do 7 times 6 which equals 42 80 times 6 which I don't I don't really know what 80 times 6 is but I do know what 200 Seven times six is forty-two. Well done. Okay, I'm gonna ask someone else for the next step. Just then, it makes it, it makes it a little bit fair for everyone, though. Thank you very much, Petite. I'm gonna choose. I put someone in here. Lacey, what am I gonna do next? So I've, I've got my ones, Colin. What am I gonna do now? I'm gonna choose someone else. Okay, so I'm gonna choose Lacey. Lacey, what am I gonna do now? Lacey, what am I gonna do now?
asking for eight times six, we're asking for 80. Okay, so we know it's 48. So we can put that zero back on. Okay, just make sure all of our microphones are off. It just makes it a lot easier for everyone who's in the room. So there's no background noise. Okay, right, I'm going to pick someone else to do the last part. Clinton. What do I do next? Uh, hmm. You do. That's it, so we've done our last do, uh, two. Two hundred. Good boy. Two hundred times what, Clinton? Um, six. Good boy. Two hundred times six. And how would we work that out, Clinton? Um, I would uh, shorten it down to go two times six, then Good add two boy. zeros to the answer. Well done, but we're not adding the two zeros, we're just popping them back on. I would say we're popping them back on. So two times six is twelve, and we pop those zeros back on, it's one thousand two hundred. Well done, Clinton, thank you very much. And then the last step is using our column addition to add all of those up. So we've got our ones, two, two, four, and eight.
what it looks like. So if you were to pick a one star and you open that document, you're going to need to do it in your books, but the questions are going to be on this document. Come on, load up. Thank you. OK, so this is what your questions will look like. One star, OK, you've literally, I've set it out for you. OK, and you will need to copy that into your book. So I've set it out and I've given you little reminders as to what you need to do for each step. OK, if you're doing a challenge two, can we make sure all of our microphones are off for me? Thank you. If you're doing a challenge two, very similar. I've started you off, so I've given you the the layout for the first two questions. But then the questions after that, I've given you blank boxes. OK, or I've just written the number sentence. So you have to set that out in your book. OK, remembering if you're doing it in your book, we've got one number per square and we're lining up those numbers beautifully. OK, and then I'll, I'll challenge to me if you'd like to have a go at that today is. Sure. I have set up first two questions just as a little reminder for you. And then the questions after that, I haven't even given you a box. OK, and you've got a mixture of two digit and three digit questions in there. If it's helpful, use your multiplication grids that were in your home packs. Or sometimes what I do is I write the whole times table down the side of my book and then I can count much easier. OK, but use what 